Get a free 60-day trial from today's sponsor at shipstation.com forward slash forge. Now, I love a good dagger. I think they are one of the most beautiful types of blades there are. And in fact, the second ever knife that I made was a Mosaic Damascus Steel Fairbend Sykes. This is a production model Fairbend Sykes knife. It's brand new. And all these years on from when I was a much younger whippersnapper and I made that Fairbend Sykes, I want to make another one, but this time a little less on the artistic side, a little more on the functional side. Fairbairn Sykes is a knife with a phenomenal history starting in the Second World War, but it has aged very well as it's still a gorgeous knife that's in use today. We're gonna make one out of stainless steel, we're gonna Cerakote it black ourselves, and I wanna make a nice Kydex sheath for it, so there's gonna be lots of learning here. Step number one is to see do we actually like the stick tang construction? Because I've always been concerned it might be weak. Pretty good. Well, it's definitely strong enough. It's constructed with this conical nut with a little conical hole in there so it all lines up. It's actually got very loose tolerances on it. Makes manufacturing a little bit easier. And it's quite incredible that it's so strong despite the tang being so thin with that tiny little area for potential stress concentration. Hopefully we can make some productive tweaks in the design so ours is nice and sturdy. The first thing we're gonna do, however, is get started on the handle. We're gonna make ours out of bronze. As I'm looking at the blade here, I don't see any reason for the tang being quite so narrow. And that affects how we make our handle because the first step is going to be making the slot. This tip of the handle is about 17 millimeters thick, which means the very front portion of the tang could be much, much broader than it currently is. I'd also want to incorporate a nice radius in that transition to minimize the stress concentrations and end up with a blade that transitions to the tang a little bit more like this. How are you gonna drill a hole in the top of that? With a drill bit. How are you gonna get the drill bit into the top of it? Hopefully by lowering this table. It's already the bottom. Not quite. <laughs> Jamie, you've really got me worried now. We might be pooped. Well, the handle's not gonna be that long, is it? Nah, nah, so I could cut it down, but still need enough to hold it in the lathe. Need at least that much to hold it in the lathe. I'll tell you what, one is really limited by the height on a bridge port as soon as you put one of these in there. Gotta make sure this thing is straight up and down. I can't just trust the uh, angles for such a long hole. It's actually very close. This is impossible. It's <laughs> no, it's not impossible, I just can't use the chuck. Wow, what a great start. I don't know if anything happened. That made a horrifying noise. Didn't Something it? did happen. Something happened. Oh, I shit myself. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Jumped back like something just exploded. There we go. Just wanted a little power feed. Much, much smoother. I hope that's all the milling I've got to do. But there's our hole for accepting the tang. So here's how it looks inside. It starts with a 10 millimeter hole that then goes down to an 8.5 millimeter hole and then finishes with a four millimeter hole. And the bit of end milling we've done on the sides is at a two and a half degree angle, sloping down from 14 millimeters wide at the opening, all the way down to just the 10 millimeter diameter. So it's those milled slots that are gonna retain it from twisting, and we should end up with a really nice, smooth tapering tang all the way down. It's not drawn to scale, but I'm fairly sure I planned it properly. And so now she goes to the lathe. This is obviously a very large diameter compared to this, and there's some nice little contours that we have to make.
should probably cut it off at some point. I don't know if I should cut it off now or later. Anytime I'm at a point like this, it's often a good time to start on a different component because I then get to have the luxury of time to think about what to do. So why don't we do this? Let's have a look at the blade. Got to take a quick second to thank today's sponsor, which is ShipStation. It is the industry leader in web-based e-commerce shipping solutions, helping even the smallest one-man band operation to huge multi-warehouse companies to become exceptionally efficient at processing, fulfilling, and shipping their customers' orders. The way it works is your selling platform, whether it's Amazon, eBay, Squarespace, or countless other services, sync all your orders into the ShipStation dashboard, where you can automate routine shipping task, print shipping labels, select the shipping options for the best rate and delivery time to suit your customer, and help turn shipping into the easiest part of your business so that you can focus on what you do best. With a ShipStation membership, you get hooked up with industry-leading discounts. We're talking up to 84% off UPS and USPS shipping rates. You'll never have to go to the post office again because you can schedule USPS pickups so they'll come to you. So if you want to make ship happen, go to ShipStation.com forward slash forge. You're going to get a 60-day free trial see just how good it is to use and how much time it saves you. That's shipstation.com forward slash forge. Let's get back to the video. So as I said earlier, I want to make our blade out of stainless steel for the corrosion resistance that it provides. Just in case, I have some six millimeter thick 1080 carbon steel, but what I'm hoping that we're going to be able to have success with is this 14C28N stainless that is four millimeters wide. Now the reason I'm a bit iffy about whether it's gonna work great or not is this original is 4.8 millimeters thick at its largest point. So we're gonna be sacrificing a little bit of material here, which I'm hoping is okay. This one is already very stout. I think it could afford to have a little bit more flexibility. And despite the very funky design right here with the possibility for stress concentrations, the tang still feels plenty strong. Tell you what, the end result of this blade when it's made out of this four mil thick if it is as sturdy as we would like, it's going to be a laser. It's going to be such a mean little needle. So I've decided that instead of cutting out the blade shape and grinding the bevels before heat treat, as we often do, I'm going to do it after hardening. Now, what's good about this stainless steel as compared to the rope knife that we made out of stainless steel a few weeks ago is this one can be oil hardened and doesn't require a cryogenic treatment. The specs state 1,050 degrees Celsius, held for five minutes. And so I went and bought one of these things, which is a thermometer, good old long probe. And we're gonna shove this in the fire, find our temperature, and hopefully dial it in perfectly. So this forge has these Venturi burners. The way that it works is the gas forced through a very, very tiny nozzle, sucks in the air through this, and it mixes, and it creates the type of flame that we want. So by very gently adjusting this up top, we're able to adjust the mix and actually get a fairly accurate temperature. But of course, it's all gonna be helped with my handy dandy tube trick. Slow and steady. We'll get there, 1050, that's the goal. 1050 is quite hot. I think we might be about bang on with this forge setting. Oh no, too hot. All right, so I'm going to tone it down just a touch. Got to make sure we get temperature readings from both sides. Make sure that both burners are firing about the same. We've got even heat. Still rising a bit fast. Cool our jets here a touch. Almost got the right setting. 1,000, oh, it was 1,053 earlier, I promise. All right, we've got both ends dialed. This is going to go in the oil nicely. 1,052 degrees Celsius. I need to set the bricks up identical, pop that in there, let it get up to temperature, and then hold for five minutes. I just realized I didn't put it in any foil. It's been five minutes, 1,051 degrees, let's quench it. Hopefully it stays straight, wish me luck. Please tell me it has not warped. Oh, it's got a little bit of warp. Hopefully she straightens out nice. Smell is exquisite. Oh, it's delicious. actually bloody perfect. That's gonna be the straightest blade I've ever made. It's not hard at all. Is this a bit of mild steel? <laughs> it's meant to be hard, but it's not hard. I am concerned it does not feel like it's hardened. This is meant to get to like 60 Rockwell, but it's most definitely not that. Oh, 
That feels a lot harder. That's hard as nails now. Ooh, yeah. She hard. Right, we've got the sucker in the tempering oven, but we're now gonna get back to this handle. So it can now come out of the lathe. I really like the shape, I think it's quite nice. But you see, there's not a lot of grip to it, is there? Yeah, if that was wet, it'd be like a wet fish. Yes, but it looks kind of salmon-y, doesn't it? We need to do something about this grip or lack thereof. This model of Fairbairn Sykes obviously has these grooves cut in, and we could do that on the lathe relatively simply, but what if we want to make it a little bit more interesting. We've got this relatively modern design of the knife. Comes about in the 1940s. It looks very beautiful, and I think it looks very reminiscent of the daggers of the 15th and 16th century. And so what I would quite like to do is instead of this more modern, quite functional grip, I like to go a little old school, put just a touch of flamboyance in it with some spiral fluting. But if we want to put some spiral flutes on, we've got to know where they go, how they go. We want to make sure that it's neat and even. How am I possibly going to do that? Well, I think I've seen a trick before. Trouble is, I can't put this in the lathe because the lathe's lead screw wouldn't allow me to turn a wide enough thread. It would be so cool if it could, but it won't. I know I could hold six bits of string perfectly in a hexagon from here, but what about from there? <laughs> it looks like I've dressed him in a wig. <laughs> oh! That might actually bloody well work, Jamie. We're on the right track, ladies and gents. I was hoping that I would see a gap, like a stencil. Well, one. the string you used sucks. What kind of string is that? It's jute twine. Yeah, what, are you some sort of like hippie or something? Why didn't you use proper string? I don't have proper string. I guess I have some polypropylene string, but it's not that thin. Yeah, it needs to be like thin and way less wispy. It's quite wispy. <laughs> yeah, this might suck, everybody. <laughs> it might have no <laughs> marks whatsoever. You're, bit, you're getting a bit high on these fumes. <laughs> I've just stood up, yeah. Woo! <laughs> do we have a clear spot? That is the question. You know what? I think we bloody well do. Oh! Folks, we got a clear spot. Will this work? Maybe will this work? This seems like a terrible idea. Why? You feel like I'm going to destroy it? You're just going to slip straight away. This is true. I will slip straight away. But I've decided this. If, or rather when I do slip, because I've still got this attached, it can go back in the lathe to be polished up on the OD. Right. So I don't think it's the end of the world. Would it not be better if you cut it in with the um, with one of these? It might be. Like maybe start it, get a groove going. Very smart. <laughs> I'm gonna ruin it. That is going to end up in a stabbing. Don't slip, don't slip, don't slip, don't. Ah. All right, now I think we've got a big enough groove for the chainsaw file at last. Chainsaw files are just simply the best files on earth. So this is going a little bit slowly. I'd like it to go faster, but the trouble is if I go fast, I will probably make a mistake. So I'm gonna put at risk a mistake to hopefully gain some speed. Oh my, good lord. I'm making dog's breakfast right here. Oh, that is the tool. It's working so well. That's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. Thank you to ShipStation for sponsoring this. Check them out down below, shipstation.com forward slash forge. And please go get yourself a steel grinder and other great products at alexsteelco.com. We'd love to be a part of your knife making or blacksmithing journey. See ya, bye.